Welcome to a preview of the agent-based modeling with InsightMaker uh, learning module. In this module, over the next couple of months, what I'll do is walk through um, all of the aspects involved in creating agent-based simulation models in InsightMaker. And the intent is to, to develop your capacity to actually develop agent-based models in InsightMaker. Now the best way to, to describe what agent-based models are is to probably provide a, a comparison with something that hopefully you're already familiar with, which is the typical system dynamics simulation model or continuous simulation models. This is a model of a, what's typically referred to as a SIR model. It's a dis disease um, model whereby individuals are susceptible and based upon some infection factor become infected with the disease and then over some period of time based on a recovery rate they recover when they recover they're actually immune for some period of time though they lose that immunity over time so within this model there's a large number of people and they migrate through these diff different stocks at, based upon the formulas and when you run this model you'll notice that it starts out with with everyone being susceptible and then they become infected and they recover and then it stabilizes over time within this model it's a large number of entities people which migrate from one stock to another but there's no identification of or differentiation of one person from another. It's just a large number of people here and then some of them migrate here, but you can't tell one from the other. With an agent-based simulation model, each individual entity in the model is explicitly identifiable. So if we look at this same concept or conceptual model implemented as an agent-based simulation model. We end up having a few additional concepts that are part of the model in that, that there is a person and the person exists or can exist in, an, in one of a number of different states so that the person can be susceptible, infected, or recovered and then develop a loss of immunity to become susceptible over time. And there are formulas that define the way that that person transitions from susceptible to infected to recovered back to susceptible. And once you define these states, which is the way they're referred to for, for an agent, you define these states, you then define a population of those agents, and you the simulation model then goes ahead and exercises this set of relationships over time. Now, each individual agent in this model person is identifiable. And because they're identifiable, you could also keep track of where they are. In this particular, it says spatially aware, this model was set up to actually populate a grid with these people when they're created and have it behave in such a way that that when people become infected the susceptible people move away from the infected people because they don't want to become infected and that's done with with this flight action and we'll explain all of these in in the modules to follow here it's just to to show you that there are a different set of concepts associated with the model and what that results in so that if you simulate this you can see that here are the the individual agents populated throughout the space and as they become infected the susceptible agents move away from them and because of the random nature of the way that this is created the model produces a slightly different result each time it's run, though even though it's running with the same set of rules, it's the random nature of 
the interactions that's causing it to to produce a different result and the intent is to understand the behavior that results from those that set of rules now as a couple of additional examples here is what's called a, a foraging model where we have two different agents and initially the whole idea of agent-based modeling confused me and it would if they'd have called it object-oriented modeling that would probably been easier for me to understand because it's it's simply defining an, uh, an object which they refer to as an agent with some set of properties in this particular model there are two agents there is a consumer which doesn't actually have any states it just has an action that it performs and then the other agent is patches of ground which are fertile or non-fertile and the idea is that that the consumers wander around looking for fertile patches of ground to consume and there is a set of interaction rules whereby once a, a consumer consumes a fertile patch it becomes non-fertile but after some period of time it transitions back to being fertile again and because this is laid out on a grid when you simulate this you'll notice that the the consumers are wandering around looking for the the fertile patches of ground and they are consuming them so that they become non-fertile and the non-fertile ones after some period of time become fertile and the agents then pursue them the, and then another example called game of life which was developed to show how a very simple set of rules can produce very different behavior on an ongoing basis there's a there's a set of cells laid out on a on a grid and each one of those cells is either alive or dead and the interaction rules are that a, a live cell with less than two alive neighbors dies a live cell with more than three alive neighbors dies and a dead cell with three neighbors becomes alive so that the way this is laid out and executed you'll notice that that the nature of the matrix changes constantly based upon that set of interaction rules so that some of the cells are coming to life and some of them are dying each iteration and it evolves through that set of states as the simulation runs so those are some examples of the kinds of things that you can do with agent-based simulation models and as I said, in the, in the modules, or the elements of this learning module, over the next couple of months, we'll investigate piece by piece the individual components used to develop agent-based models and develop your capacity to develop them yourself. Now, notice that whether you enter this learning module from the Keeley entry point with the agent-based modeling being here or whether you enter it directly to the agent-based modeling segment of Keeley this initial overview will be the same and this is the preview video where the preview video will be that I'm making at the moment and within this section there are three references provided this first one a, a very well written paper about the difference between discrete event uh, agent based and system dynamics models I highly recommend that you read it um, it's just a very well written paper that that will help you understand distinctly the difference between them and then there's a couple of additional references that are the insight maker references which talk about the different types of simulation models in Insight Maker, and then a, a short overview of agent-based models itself. So um, this, as I said, this learning module is currently under development. If you want to follow the development of this module, simply go ahead and send me your Kumu username, and I'll add you to 
the members list so you'll receive notifications of updates as we add things to this model. And if you don't have a Kuma username, you can get one at this URL. Um, they're free. Just go and sign up for one. And there's just a, a couple of elements as part of this learning module at the moment, though in the days and weeks that follow, there, this will become extensively populated with, with all, all of the appropriate elements that walk you through the pieces that are used to create agent-based models. And hopefully you find this learning module uh, helpful and useful. And I'll see you in the next video.